Hi there, it's Sam from Poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. This is today's project. It's a it's a pretty big fold open box. I'm not going to show you how it folds open because I'm really, really happy with that bow. And if I take it off, I'll never get it back on again. But I will show you, obviously, as we're making it, how it opens and closes. But I've hand stamped everything on it. And that's, that's what happens when the designer series paper goes on the retiring list. It sells out. You've got nothing left and you can't show the new stuff yet. So, this has all been hand stamped by using my beautiful perpetual birthday calendar stamp set. Have you got it yet? You should do. Even if you never use the wording, and I never have used the wording. Look, they're all beautifully clean. I have used everything else so many times. You just need to go and search for this on my blog and you'll find out how, many, how much I have used it. And I love, love, love it. So, I'm going to show you how to make the box. You need a piece of cardstock that measures 8 by 11 inches or 20 by 28 centimetres. Now this is a size of paper I use very frequently in my projects. It's amazing how many different sizes and shapes and everything you can get. So with this one, with the long side at the top, score it at 2 inches, 4 and a half, 6 and a half and 9 inches which is 5, 11 and a half, 16 and a half and 23 centimetres. Turn it around and score it at 2 and at 6, which is 5 and 15 centimetres. And the finished size of the box, let's put that out of the way, is 4 inches by 2 and a half by 2 inches deep, which is 10 centimetres by 6 and a half by 5 centimetres. So a good size. So we're going to fold and burnish the score lines, but we're not going to stick it together just yet because I need to do all of the decoration and I need to scramble out loads of dimensions for you. Somebody asked me recently um, why I don't put them on the screen. Well, that's because I work in metric and imperial and I share both. And if I put them on the screen, you'd never see what I'm doing, particularly as it all looks like that. So please don't worry about writing anything down because it will all be on my blog for you. Um, so don't worry about doing that. Just head over there. The, there is a direct link to this project um, in the description bar below. So, okay, so I'm cutting and notching. And because this is a big box, you can't get away with just chopping. You have to notch. And it's worth it to get the smooth, perfect finish. It, trust me, it really is. Take a few extra minutes. And it's worth it. I'm sorry to get to listen to me ramble on a little bit more. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So just cut these. Okay, last few. So I'm notching, I'm keeping the rectangles as whole and I'm cutting into the squares. The squares are what are going to be hidden away, um, but if you didn't trim them, then they would peep out, basically, which is never pretty. You don't have to take great chunks out. You can see I'm only taking slivers. Okay, so I need to put that to oops, that to one side to then give all of the measurements for everything else. So. My original box was Sahara Sand with Wisteria Wonder and then Whisper White on top. So the colour is the bigger of the two sets of measurements that you're going to do. So you need one piece for the top that measures three and a quarter, sorry, three and three quarters by two and a quarter, which is nine and a half by six. Like I say, don't worry about writing these down. I'll give them to you anyway. Two for the front and back that are three and three quarters by one and three quarters, so nine and a half by four. And then you need two for the sides, which is that and that, which are one and three quarters by two and a quarter. And then you need the same number of pieces, but in whisper white, that are basically a quarter of an inch, half a centimetre smaller. So uh, let me go with this. Let, oh, I've got, I thought I'd lost one. Three and a half by two, so that's nine by five and a half. These two, three and a half by one and a half, nine by four. These two, one and a half by two, four by five and a half. Okay, put the coloured ones out of the way and we're going to stamp on the white ones. And so as I said, I've got a petrol birthday calendar. This is the one I used on my original. I'm going to use the butterflies this time round. 
so I have to be careful to make sure that they're all the right way round. So I'm going to stamp the paler, the crumb cake I've used on this one. And I'm just, it doesn't matter to me if they go off. Oops. Okay, and my stamping scrub is just to my right. And I've got, I'm just going to clean that stamp. Oh, apparently peel it off the block. Because I'm going to come in with some Marina Mist, which is the blue. I'll just stamp all over them again. Just to make sure my butterflies are the right way up. There we go. They're done now. If I turn them all over, I'm going to put snail on the back of all of these. Oops, oh. Let's try that again. And then I'm going to basically marry them all up to their counterparts. So, this one. They're all just off, just off the grid paper because I've run out of room. Here we go. It's my phone. <laughs> noisy, noisy in the office today. Okay, so this box is all going to fold up and round on itself, kind of like that, and it's going to open and close like that. So these will need to be stuck down first. So the biggest panel goes here, and you only want to have one space below it, one panel below. So it's one, uh, one, of the, count one, two, three, four, five. It's you're putting it onto number two. And it's easiest if you go with the, this panel first and then you know you can get everything to go around so this is going to be the front so you need to put that and have your butterflies facing in the same direction the one behind it the butterflies need to look like they're upside down And the side panels have your butterflies facing that way, flying towards the centre. I promise you this will all make sense when you build it. Okay, now to stick it all together. These smaller parts, because there is only half an inch difference, but it's the, the six that are every other one space. These are the ones that you're going to put your adhesive on. And it's the adhesive of your choice, as long as it's strong. Snail isn't going to hold cardstock to cardstock together. But this is Fuse that I'm using, and this will. So, okay, we're going to ignore the, that panel first. We're going to work on what's the bottom of the box. So this loose tab, attach it, and the same one on the opposite side. Oh, I've got awfully close to the camera. Sorry, this box is huge. And then these panels are also going to come round and match. And then you're just left to attach the lid part now. And when I close it up, so now you can see what kind of a close it is. All your butterflies are the right way round. Fabulous, huh? Now just to finish off tying a bow. So I've got Whisper White Seam Binding Ribbon. We don't have one in um, either of these colours. 
which is a bit of a shame, but we did have a Wisteria Wonder um, one, which is why I did that, but I think it's going to look just as gorgeous with Whisper White. I am no doubt going to get this bow completely all over the place, aren't I? Oh, it's vaguely pointing in the right direction. That's a good... There we go. That's okay. And that is my hand-stamped decorated box. I rather like it. I hope you do too. It's a good size box. Great for loads of goodies in there. Treats, gifts, all sorts. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me and I hope to speak to you soon. Bye.